Sequoia here with Firehouse Education, and you guessed it, this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week, what I want to do is actually answer several people's questions that I have been getting a plethora of in my email and text messages lately. And it's got to do with employees and hiring people for contents processing, whether it's the pack out or the cleaning. So there's been some challenge, I know, as of late in our current state of the world that we live in today, as far as getting employees and hiring them. And there's been some difficulty that I have heard back and forth from some of my coaching clients and students about even getting someone to show up when it comes to a job interview. I hear this all across the country, um, actually hear it out of the country for some of our coaching clients that we have in Australia. And what seems to be a common denominator, there's, there's a few things. And, and what I wanna do in this video is I wanna share those with you and maybe have you kind of sit back and question yourself a little bit and analyze if you are struggling and having a hard time finding employees to do contents cleaning or even just struggling in general to hire employees right now, I really want you to ask yourself some questions. So first off, the first question I want you to ask yourself is, What's in it for them? When we're hiring an employee, you know, we think that we are actually the buyer. When in all reality, we're not. The person that we're hiring is the buyer. So we need to make what we're selling, which is a position to come and work for us, right? In our company, we need to make what we're selling to them, that position, attractive. Something that the kind of person, that we want, right? Our avatar, our person who's our ideal employee, we want to be able to offer them what it would take to attract our ideal employee and then keep them, okay? So we need to ask ourselves, what is it, what's in it for them? What does that on an ideal employee that we want, and your avatar may be different depending on your area or the position that you're hiring for. So what's your avatar and what does that kind of person want in a job? And then make sure that you're providing that, okay? And if you're finding a big disconnect there, then maybe you don't have your avatar correct. If you're finding that, well, I shouldn't have to offer these things. I don't feel like this is something that I should have to do to hire this type of a person that I want. Then maybe you need to sit back and analyze, is that really the kind of person that you're willing to hire then for that position? Does that make sense? The other thing that I want you to ask yourself is, have I written my ad correctly? And am I looking in the right place? So many times when I, when people say, oh, I put ads out and I just can't get anybody to even respond or I get them to respond, set up an interview and they don't show up. Then I ask them where they put their ads and then I ask them to send me copy the ad so I can look at it. And the ads, quite frankly, are, are terrible. They're terrible. The worst thing that you can say in an employment ad, in my opinion, and I say it in all, almost all of them that get sent to me is, what do they say? competitive wages and benefits. What did you just say there when you said that? You know what you said? You said, we're average. We're just like everybody else. There's nothing different about this company, our company, my company, than working for anybody else. So then tell me, why should that person choose you? Why should they come and get an interview with you and choose to show up and go to work for your company? And the other thing that I see in ads that are not well written is there's everything is all about the company, all about how amazing the company is, which is important to say some of that. But really, when someone's looking for a job, they're just looking at what's in it for me. What am I going to get if I go to work at this company? Am I going to get a great place to work? Am I going to have nice people to be around? Am I going to have an awesome company culture? Am I going to have good benefits? Am I going to get taken care of? If I have a problem or concern, am I going to be listened to? Am I going to have good, clean, safe working conditions when I go to work? Which is a big concern when you're dealing, especially with fire restoration and the kind of, you know, mold sewer backup, whatever it is that we're doing in our restoration business. So don't forget to be sure that you list the benefits, not just how amazing the company is. I mean, say a, a, a little bit about that, but these people wanna know what's in it for them. What are the benefits of them going to work 
for our company. Now, the third thing I want you to ask yourself after you get through those, you've got the great ad written and you, you've got the benefits down and you know your avatar and who you want to hire is when you do attract that person and you hire that ideal team member, what are you going to do to keep them? What do you have set up in your company to nurture and cultivate your staff? What kind of company culture do you have set up in regards to training, in regards to you know, a family type atmosphere to make sure that everyone on the team knows that they're an integral part, they're important, they're cared about, and that they are integral to the running of the company, that they matter, right? that their position and the work that they do matters. What is it you have in place in your company to make sure that that is where you can continue to hold on to those amazing, great employees once you hire them? I want you to be really truthful with yourself and I want you to be harsh with yourself when you ask yourself these questions. I don't care if you're an owner or you're the manager of a department that's hiring employees. If you're a leader, then you need to ask yourself those questions and be able to answer them. And if you don't like the answers, then change it. You're the one that's in control. You're the one that can create that wonderful atmosphere to bring in those eight players and be able to set your team up and your company to be successful to the point where you won't have to worry about hiring people. They will literally be knocking your door down, asking for work. Wouldn't that be great? All right. Well, I hope you felt this helpful. If you did find this helpful, please comment below the video. Let me know. And if you have some awesome things that you do in your company to either attract and or keep, um, you know, in regards to like your company culture, to attract and keep A plus players on your team that you have found to be very successful, please share with us. Comment below the video and let us know what it is that you do in your company. On that note, please be sure to send me questions and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. I just might see you on next week's Ask Anissa video call.